In our last episode, we solved the Brotherhood problem. We then spent some time scouring the wreckage of the Pridwen to get whatever loot we could. But we are needed urgently back at the Institute. Upon arrival, we can head upstairs to tell Sean, our son, the good news. But we find him lying in his medical bed. He appears to be motionless. Hello, Sean. Ah, there you are. I've already heard the news, but of course you wouldn't be here if it weren't a success. I'm glad it worked, but I'm glad you're safe. At one hell of a cost. They left us no choice. Remember that. There will always be difficult decisions to make. It's all over. Ah. But it's really not. It's just beginning for you. The Institute is in your hands now. Lead them well. We're all safe now. For now. Yes, but... There will always be threats. You must remain vigilant. Are you comfortable? It's good of you to ask. I'm fine. Don't worry about me, just... Take care of the Institute. Take care of its people. They're good people. You know that. Ali has always been loyal to the Institute. And to me. You can rely on her for help. Once I'm gone, it's all up to you. Isn't there some other way? Another treatment that can help you? Nothing permanent, no. The inevitable could be delayed, but at increasingly terrible cost, I simply decided it wasn't worth it. There's got to be something more we can do for you. No, it's... This is what I want. It's all right. I don't know if I can take your place. You don't need to look at it that way. Don't worry about taking my place. Make your own place. I'll do my best. I know you will. Don't worry about me. You need to look ahead. Focus on the future. Our time together has been... strange, hasn't it? I spent years wondering what you were like. Thinking about all we missed out on. I want you to know that... I'm grateful for the time we've had. Do you really mean that? Yes. Of course I do. I wish we had more time. The time has been short. Yes. But it's better than no time at all. I don't know what to say. Shh. It's all right. I'm glad I found you. As am I. Thank you. Father, you've helped a boy achieve his dreams, I think. I think I'd like to sleep now. I've lost Sean. All over again. I close my eyes. I see my life before all of this. Before the bombs. Everything can change in an instant, and the future you plan for yourself shifts, whether or not you're ready. At some point, it happens to all of us. This wasn't the world I wanted, but it was the one I found myself in. The Commonwealth. My home. Ripped apart and put back together. I thought, I hoped, I could find my family, cheat time, make us whole again. The way we were. But now I know. I know I can't go back. I know the world has changed. That the road ahead will be hard. This time, I'm ready. Because I know war. War never changes.
With that, we complete the quest, Nuclear Family, and the game. We appear on a balcony overlooking the concourse, but if we go back into Father's room, we find his bed empty. There are no further entries on his terminal. On our way out, we see Dr. Dean Volkert. Dean, why don't you go see Dr. Fillmore? I'll take care of things here. Looks like Dean is going to do a bit of cleanup and rearranging in here. Heading downstairs, we find Dr. Ali Fillmore sitting on a bench in the concourse. I know this is a difficult time, but you're the director now. It's time for you to lead us. Excuse Don't me, tell me. Ali. He's gone, isn't he? I'm very sorry. I know this must be difficult for you. Good riddance. I'm glad he's gone. Well, that's unfortunate. I suppose it's just as well he isn't able to hear that sentiment. Moving on. Thank you. That's kind of you. I'm certainly happy to do whatever I can to help going forward. He mentioned you. Said he always trusted you. That's very complimentary. Thank you. I hope you'll feel the same going forward. What happens now? Now you take his place. Obviously, the director's quarters are now yours. I'll see to it that requisitions is restocked and have them add in some additional items to be used at your discretion. Some of the divisions may still need your help. Consider checking in with them. Good luck, Director. And now that we are the Director, Sean's quarters belong to us. All that really changes is that we can now sleep in Father's bed. Without any workbenches in his room, it doesn't make for a practical player home. But she mentioned that Requisitions has been restocked, and we can check in with the synth vendor. This soon after Sean's death, we don't find anything new. It actually takes a couple of in-game days before this vendor restocks, and when he does, we find that synth relay grenades are now available for purchase. Until now, they were a limited resource here in the Institute. The ones we looted from Advanced Systems were the only ones we had access to in the game. But now we have essentially unlimited synth relay grenades, a useful item that will come in handy. Moving out, we can talk to a few of the scientists here. Only a few have any dialogue relating to Father's death. Maybe you already know this, but... Well, Father was very proud of you. Dr. Thompson. I'm really sorry about Father. I mean, Sean. I can't imagine losing one of my children. Your son will leave a lasting legacy here. He truly was a great man, and a great leader. Dr. Oberlin. I wasn't sure about you, not at first. Now I can see why Father chose you to lead us. Heading up the ramp towards robotics, we find a new monument. It's a memorial to Father. Goodbye, Sean. It's not inscribed, it's simply emblazoned with the Institute logo which represented the thing that was most important on this earth to Sean. Mankind redefined. Heading back to the concourse, we can check in with the other synth vendor, who sells food. Hello. Please ensure that your dietary requirements are being filled. But we don't find anything new on this merchant. But speaking of dietary needs, you can eat far healthier than an institute packet in real life thanks to my new sponsor, Factor. You may have noticed over the years that I've been losing a bit of weight. And even though I haven't met my goal yet, I've actually lost over 100 pounds. And that's thanks to a lot of rigorous exercise combined with better eating. I used Factor to help achieve my goals because the meals come ready to heat. Each meal is dietitian approved and calorie smart with around or less than 550 calories per serving. I don't have to cook anything or put anything together. As a full-time YouTuber and single dad, I don't always have the time to cook or go grocery shopping. With Factor, I skip the grocery store, the chopping, the prepping, the cleanup. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All I have to do is pop it in the microwave, heat it, eat it, and I'm done. And I love their variety. Each week, I always find something that I actually like. They have over 34 chef-prepared, dietitian-approved weekly options. 
and every week there's something new. Plus, in addition to the full meals, they have an assortment of snack options with drinks, sides, and over 45 other add-ons, including breakfasts, smoothies, and more. Factor has been a huge part of me achieving my goals, and that's why I'm really proud to have Factor as a sponsor. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use the code OXHORN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. And thank your lucky stars that you never have to eat an Institute food packet. Now, Ali mentioned that many of the other Division leads might have quests for us. And this is an opportunity to see how they react to Father's death. We'll start by going into Synth Retention. Heading inside and talking to whomever we left in charge of the SRB in this playthrough, it was Justin Io. We don't find any new dialogue. He doesn't mention Father's death at all. Instead, he offers us the same Radiant quest that we got from him previously. The same is true for when we talk with Alana Secord. No one in here has anything new to say, but at least it's good to know that we can continue with the SRB's Radiant quests. Heading out and moving to robotics, we can try to talk to Alan Bonet, but his only dialogue is concerning the quest involving his son. When I talked with him, he did not offer me his Radiant quest, Pest Control. And I'm not sure why, as he is supposed to. It could have been that I simply tried talking to him too soon after completing the quest previously, but that wouldn't make sense as the other members of the Institute are still willing to give me their quests. And I completed all of the Radiant quests in the Institute at around the same time. It could be a bug. And there are a number of bugs related to this quest that have been reported about Alan Bonet. So we should be able to get pest control from him. But in my game, I couldn't. Heading out, we can move to bioscience. And like with the other departments, no one has anything to say about Father's death. However, we can talk to Clayton Holdren to get his Radiant Quest. I'll get it for you. Excellent! I've made real progress thanks to your help. Heading out of bioscience, we can move to advanced systems. And here, finally, some of the other scientists acknowledge Sean's death. I can't imagine what you must be feeling losing your son so soon after finding him. I know this is a difficult time, but I wanted to say that I look forward to working with you, Director. We've lost a great leader, but you've lost a son. You have my deepest sympathies. Once you've acclimated to your new role, we should meet to discuss policy updates. Let's hope the change in leadership is a smooth one. And yet, some characters seem to be unaware that father is even dead. I hope you and father try to make up the time you've lost. Family is important. And Evan Watson continues to give us his Radiant Quest. No problem. Great! I'm eager to see what else we can learn. Moving into Dr. Lee's lab, we find Synth Sean. Do you think it's weird that I've never seen the surface? Hey, Sean. Hi, Dad. I've been waiting for you. You've been waiting? For me? Yeah, they said I had to wait, so I waited. I think maybe you're a bit confused, Sean. Nope, not at all. They told me you'd be coming to see me, so I waited nice and patiently. Look, I'm not your father. <laughs> you're funny. Of course you are. Hi, son. I'm glad I don't have to keep waiting. I didn't want to forget. Here, this is for you. It's a hollow tape from father. He said to give it to you, but not to listen to it. it is it true that he died? I liked him. He was always really nice to me. It's true. He's gone. Wow. Okay. He was a monster. The things he did. Really? A monster? Well, then maybe it's not so bad he's gone. I know it's hard to understand. Are you okay, Sean? I mean, I'll miss him. But I guess that's just what happens. Yeah. I'm afraid it's true. I'm... Oh, I'm gonna miss him. But you're in charge now. Right? You must be pretty excited about that. Hey, Dad, can you do something for me? Next time you're above ground, can you look for something? I want to try building some new stuff. I can really use an old alarm clock. I bet I can make something really useful for you. What are you planning on building? I don't know. Whatever I can come up with. I bet it'll be neat, though. So, will you look for one? You don't need old junk, Sean. Plenty of things down here to tinker with. Nobody ever lets me take stuff apart down here. Besides, working with old stuff is fun. So, are you going to look for one for me? Sorry, kid. I've got more important things to worry about. Oh. Okay, well, maybe some other time. Thanks anyway. 
Sure thing, Sean. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad? Somehow this kid now thinks that I'm his dad. And he didn't think that way not very long ago. Remember, after we activated the reactor, we talked with him. He didn't call us dad. He didn't really seem to know who we were. And at the time, he said that he was sad because father didn't come by to visit him very often. Clearly, between then and now, he's been reprogrammed to think that Sean actually cared about him and to think that we're his father. But why? And reprogrammed by whom? Well, he gave us a holotape from Sean. Opening up the Pip-Boy, we can find Sean's holotape. If you are hearing this, then the time has come. I am gone. I can no longer look after young Sean. I hope that you might be willing. He has been reprogrammed to believe he is your son. I hope that was not too presumptuous on my part. Both he and you deserve a chance to... to be a family. Please, take care of him. What an odd thing for Father to do. And I think this act is so incredibly telling about his character. Did he reprogram the child synth to think that we were his father because he wanted somebody to take care of the child? Because he was concerned about the child synth's well-being? And if that's the case, then did father really believe that synths were just robots? Just property? Or could some part of him admit that his synths might have souls? Or could he have done this for a completely different reason? I have had no love to feel. We have been strangers until now, you and I. He lived without his father his entire life, and he knows what that does to a person. He knows what it's like to not have family. Could he have done this not for the synth Sean's benefit, but for our benefit? Could he have felt sorry for us that we lost Sean so soon after finding him, that our family was again taken from us? And the only thing he could do, since he couldn't continue to live, was to give us Synth Sean. Maybe he thought that we needed family, the way he needed his family. And this was the only family he could give us. Now, Synth Sean gave us a quest, but it's not a real quest. It doesn't appear in our Pip-Boy as a quest. It doesn't even show up as a miscellaneous quest. No, we have to remember what scrap item it was that Synth Sean asked us to get for him. However, thankfully, we can go back to Synth Sean at any time, and he'll remind us what it was he wanted us to get for him. If humans make synths, who makes humans? Like you and me. Hi, Sean. Did you find what I needed? What was it you wanted me to find? I need an old telephone. Let me know right away if you find one, okay? I'm working on it. Okay. I know it might be kind of hard to find, but I'm sure I can make it worth it. Sorry, kid. Don't have it. Oh, okay. Well, tell me when you find one, all right? And if we have one, we can give it to him. Yep, got it right here. Great! That's it. I'll try to make you something really good, okay? I hope it's useful. Maybe if you can't do anything with it, you could sell it to someone. Thanks again, Dad. I mean it. With that, we complete his quest. And it seems like Synth Sean here has been reprogrammed to believe that he is human. Hi there. I... I still can't believe I finally met my real father. Synths are weird, aren't they? They're almost just like real people. The others, they look up to you. I can see it. I bet it's fun to be in charge of the whole institute. Did you know me when I was younger? I can't remember. I really like taking things apart and seeing what else I can make from them. Dr. Watson always called it tinkering. The others, he told me to stop worrying. They said you can't be killed. That you'd always come back to me. I sure do miss you when you leave, Dad. But it's always great when you come back. I know everything's going to be okay, especially when you're around. What happens when people die? Can Mom see me? Which is so troubling, because that means that everyone in the Institute who knows that he's a synth now has to keep it a secret from him. It means that he's going to grow up spending the rest of his life in the Institute, and he won't age. All the children around him will age. But not him. 
He's not stupid. He's gonna figure it out. And what will that do to him when he realizes that he's been lied to, that he's really a synth? And imagine the implications of this. As far as I know, this is the first time the Institute has, on purpose, programmed a synth to believe that it's human. Outside Father's first experiment with child synth Sean while he was trying to lure Nate to the Institute. Not even Eve, Alan Benet's personal synth, was programmed to believe that she was human. She knew she was a synth. Previous to this, the only ones who had ever given synths histories and memories and reprogrammed them to think that they're human has been the railroad. Here the Institute, or father at least, has chosen to do with SynthShawn exactly what the railroad does with escaped synths. And the entire Institute knows about it, as we just heard from Sean's dialogue, and has to play along, keeping the synth child's true nature a secret from him. Now, Father programmed Synth Sean to believe that he was a human boy previously because it was part of his experiment. But what experiment is this now a part of? Father's dead. He's no longer conducting experiments. Madison Lee is no longer part of the child synth experiment. She's moved on to working on the reactor. If this child synth has been programmed to believe that he's human for an experiment, what experiment? Who's conducting the experiment? And what's the purpose? I suppose you could say that perhaps Father is conducting an experiment from beyond the grave. But of course, if he's dead, he'll never see the experiment's results. And essentially, this experiment will never end. I also wonder what this will do to the other synths working in the Institute. They've all been there for years, acting as slaves, doing whatever the Institute wishes under threat of being reprogrammed by coursers, and now they too have to pretend that this child synth is human. But why can't the Institute pretend that I am human? They might ask, why can't I be reprogrammed to believe that I am human as well? Why does this child synth get special treatment? This entire thing is bizarre from the standpoint of the Institute's very philosophy about what synths are and how the Institute has chosen to deal with them. For these reasons, I don't think there's a rational explanation for this. I don't think Synth Sean is part of any experiment. I don't even really think that Father thought much about it before choosing to reprogram him to think that he's human. I think that Father, in his old age, gave in to his sentimentality. With old age comes regret. And asking what if more often. And in this one instance, he chose to indulge in sentiment, perhaps for the sake of his father, at the expense of the Institute's own principles. And with this in mind, some of his past comments make a bit more sense. Do you think you could love him like you would a real boy? It's not you. It's not even human. I could never love that. No, perhaps not. But in many ways, he matches what you've been searching for all this time. I don't need a synth. I found the real Sean. Yes, but not the Sean you were looking for. In some ways, the synth is far closer to what you expected. I wouldn't claim to know everything you're feeling, but... If in some small way the boy's presence can help, I hope you'll keep an open mind. Now, it takes several days, but if we come back to Synth Sean, he'll give us this quest again. Last time you came back, I... Never mind. I'm just happy you're here. What's new, kid? Hey, Dad, can you do something for me? Next time you're above ground, can you look for something? I want to try building some new stuff. If you could find me a hot plate, I'd love to take it apart. I want to try and make something. For you. However, this time he asks for something completely different. In this case, it was a hot plate. And if we find one and turn it into him... Yep, got it right here. Perfect, thanks. I'll try to make you something really good. Okay? And here, this is for you. I hope it's useful. Maybe if you can't do anything with it, you could sell it to someone. Thanks again, Dad. I mean it. As a reward, he gives us two random weapon mods. These are the items that he made from the telephone we got him earlier. So we don't get rewarded the first time we do this quest. We do get rewarded the second time. In this case, I got a plasma gun sniper barrel mod and a pipe bolt action calibrated powerful receiver mod. Not very useful to me, but as he said, 
I can always sell them. However, we can get this quest a third time. I can really use an old alarm clock. This time, it's an alarm clock, and if we turn it into him... Yep, got it right here. Perfect, thanks. I'll try to make you something really good, okay? And look what I made earlier. It's for you. He gives us the Wazer Rifle. This is a legendary laser rifle with the unlimited ammo capacity legendary effect. It doesn't have unlimited ammo. It can just shoot forever without you ever having to reload it. It'll continue to fire as long as you have ammunition in your inventory. Aside from that, it's a regular laser rifle. It does not have a unique skin. Sharp-eyed viewers will recognize this as an Easter egg. It's a reference to Fallout 3. Hello, I'm Billy. Welcome to Little Wamp White. Hey, you look like you're handy with the weapon. I got kicked off the scab team, so I guess I don't need mine anymore. Wanna buy my Wazer Wifa? 500 caps and it's all yours. We can buy a Wazer Wifle from Bowie in Little Lamplight in Fallout 3. The joke is that Bowie can't say the letter L, so everyone calls him Bowie, and thus the name of the weapon we can buy from him is Wazer Wifle. That joke doesn't really transfer correctly over here to Fallout 4, as Synth Shot is really intelligent and he talks well so he wouldn't call his laser rifle the Wazer Wifle. But at any rate, it's a nice little Easter egg and callback to Fallout 3. Next, we can talk with X688 to see what he has to say after siding with the Institute. You've done it, sir. You've crippled our enemies and secured a better future for mankind. Did I? I'm not sure I made anything better. If you doubt yourself, just think of your son. The Institute was his life. And now that legacy is in your hands. It's a legacy you'll need to protect. And that brings me to my next point. I don't care. I just want my son back. I understand that. But the Institute needs a strong leader to take your son's place. This isn't the end of your work. It's only the beginning. That brings me to my next point. A better future is all I ever wanted. Then you've justified Father's faith in you and proven that he made the right choice when he named you as his successor. Speaking of which, now that you're the leader of the Institute, there's a matter you'll need to consider. What do you think, X6? Where do we go from here? I've been thinking about that. The Railroad and the Brotherhood have been beaten, but not eradicated. We're likely to encounter pockets of resistance from time to time, and we can't allow them to reorganize. I'm not worried about it. I don't think they pose a threat any longer. Today, perhaps not. But they'll bide their time and gather their strength. We should remain vigilant. We'll find them, and we'll wipe them out. That could be difficult. While they're weak, our enemies will stay hidden and try to force us to spread ourselves thin searching for them. I suggest we remain vigilant while we consolidate our strength. Let them come to us. I've had enough of fighting. Let's have some peace for a change. I can appreciate the sentiment, but I'm not sure our enemies will feel the same. What do you think we should do? We should be vigilant. If we spread ourselves thin trying to find them, we'll become vulnerable. Sooner or later, they're going to strike at us. When they do, we'll be ready. In any case, you should take time to enjoy your victory and honor your son's memory. That's what I intend to do. And here he echoes really the last thing that Father said to us before he died, to remain vigilant. We can't let this victory lull us into a false sense of security. There are still many enemies out there. We still have to fight for the Institute's safety. We see that Dr. Volkert has cleaned up here, and in so doing, he left us something. On a cabinet near to Father's bed, we find Father's lab coat. This is Father's unique set of clothing. It doesn't have any DR or ER, but it does grant us plus two to intelligence, and it's the only outfit like this in the entire game. It's also the only item of Institute clothing, with the exception of the coarser uniform, that accepts Ballistic Weave. 
When upgraded with Ballistic Weave, it becomes a viable piece of armor. But even when upgraded, the two intelligence doesn't really offset the one perception and one endurance in addition to the damage, energy, and radiation resistance that comes on a coarser uniform. And lying next to it, we find his unique Division head coat. He never actually wears this in the game, but the Division head coat is different from all the other departments as it's orange. Instead of bioscience and robotics as green, advanced systems blue, synth retentions black, and facilities yellow. It has the same stats as every other division head coat. No DR, no ER, but plus one to intelligence and plus one to perception. That's the Institute explored after Sean's death. We can now head out into the Commonwealth to see how things have changed there. We can start by heading to Diamond City. And upon arrival, we see quite a few changes. These synths just showed up. We're not doing anything wrong, so we're not sure what to do. Synths are now occupying Diamond City. They seem to be really interested in all of the workbenches here in the marketplace. They're just <laughs> using them all uh, because, you know, the Institute really needs to work on that leather armor of theirs. And we find Institute flags dotting Diamond City. However, we don't find similar changes at Good Neighbor or Bunker Hill. I guess the Institute's reasoning is that if they can occupy Diamond City, the great green jewel of the Commonwealth, they could occupy anywhere. By placing their flags in Diamond City, they're sending a message that can't be misinterpreted. That the Institute is the dominant force in the Commonwealth. I was on duty when I seen that airship fall out of the sky. I wonder if anyone survived. Fire in the sky! The Institute strikes again! Did the Institute wipe out the railroad? The Institute now controls the Commonwealth. And Travis Miles has something to say on the radio. Everyone, hi there. Um, sorry to, uh, you know, interrupt, but uh, this is, uh, well, kind of important. Reports are just now coming in of a raging fire at the airport. At no sign of the Brotherhood's airship. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't really know any more than that right now. But uh, if I can find something else out, I'll. Well, I'll mention it soon. And if I can. So stay tuned, I guess. I mean, if you want to, you don't have to. It's just, just, just a suggestion. So uh. Probably the biggest news in, well, ever. The Brotherhood of Steel has, uh, well, they were beaten pretty badly, and it sounds pretty certain that the Institute was responsible. The, uh, Boston Airport is, uh, well, the Brotherhood airship seems to have, uh, crashed right into it. So now, I guess, uh, the, the Institute is kind of, well, I guess they're sort of in charge, <laughs> since, uh... Do all no of us have to really such funny them. blows? We'll just hope that, uh, hope that message they sent was true, and that they'll, you know, mostly leave us alone. Okay! So, in the meantime, escapism! Just play some music. Worry, worry, worry. Next, we can try to see what our companions have to say. We can't ask Paladin Dance. We can't ask Deacon. But we can head into public occurrences to see what Piper thinks. So the Institute's won. <laughs> Rumor going around is that it's all thanks to you. I suppose you're proud of yourself. It may not be the Commonwealth's most thumbed newspaper, but I'd call it a success, sure. Oh, you're a riot. If I wanted your opinion, I'd ask for it. What, you think I'm just gonna stand here? We've secured the Institute's future. You bet I'm proud of that. Oh, yeah? And what about the Commonwealth's future? Why are you mad? Why? You know what this means, right? It means people getting snatched in the night. Neighbors turning on each other. And no one left to stop them. Do you really think that's what the Commonwealth needs? I don't care what the Commonwealth needs. The Institute is humanity's future now. 
I did what's right for them. I really hope you don't believe that. For both our sakes. I've done what's necessary to save humanity. I'm sorry if you're unwilling to see that. And saving humanity doesn't involve the Commonwealth in your plan, I guess. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Well, you expected right. Is there anything I can say to convince you that this was the right choice? I seriously doubt it. Because this new world you've created? I'm not sure what kind of chance it's got. And of course, Piper, the author of Public Occurrences, a newspaper that has only fed the Institute paranoia here in Diamond City, is not thrilled with us siding with the Institute. Despite this, she still agrees to be our companion. Hey, Piper. Heading my way? You know what? Never mind. You know where to find me. Perhaps she thinks that what's done is done. Or maybe she just really likes us. Next, we can head out and make our way into the alleyway to enter Valentine's detective agency. And here we find Nick Valentine waiting for his next case. Couple of sources saying that you were the one leading the Institute attack on the Pridwin. So, you want to tell me why you did it? Why you sided with those boogeymen? What? I figured you'd be happy seeing your old friends come out on top. I guess I'll add it to the growing list of things you've got wrong. Taking down the Brotherhood? The Railroad? There wasn't a side to choose. The Commonwealth is beyond saving. The Institute is the way forward. Look, I know as well as anyone living in the Commonwealth's no picnic. But this? The Brotherhood? The Railroad? You know what the Brotherhood would have done to the Commonwealth, Nick. I did the right thing here. Look, no one had more reason to dislike the Brotherhood than me. But this? Wiping them out? And the railroad? Was there really any other option? The Institute were the only ones trying to preserve humanity, Nick. Preserving humanity? That's what we're calling taking out the Brotherhood? The railroad? All those lives lost. For what? So a group of mad scientists can keep plundering the Commonwealth to their heart's content? Is that truly the world you want to live in? Watch yourself, Nick. You owe your existence to those mad scientists. They really have gotten their claws into you, haven't they? I'm sorry if you're upset, but this is the world we've got now, Nick. Thanks to you. I want to live in a world with a future, Nick. And the Institute? That's humanity's future now. Thanks to you. This seems like it's personal, Nick. I ain't thrilled to see the folks who gave me the boot coming out on top, but this... This is bigger than that. You know? Since the first time we met, I'd always got the sense that you were going to change this place. I just never expected it'd be like this. And I suppose it's no surprise to find Nick, the guy who was tossed out by the Institute as nothing but garbage, would be upset that we side with them. But just like with Piper, he's not too upset to refuse to be our companion. Nick. Time to hit the road? Not now. Well, I'll be around if you change your mind. Next, we can head to Good Neighbor. And as I said earlier, we don't see any flags or synths here, but there are some dialogue changes. Big shitstorm at Bunker Hill, huh? As long as the Institute took a licking, I'm happy. <clears throat> I don't know who had the guts to attack the Brotherhood's blimp, but I hope I don't piss them off. I heard the Institute broadcast. I ain't scared of some underground nerds. Look, I, uh, I don't want no trouble from you, pal. I know a stone-cold killer when I see one. Heading into the memory den, we can try to talk to Irma. The memory den is no friend to the Institute, honey. And here, I thought you were so nice. The den has no business with the Institute. Not now. Not ever. But she won't play ball. And neither will Dr. Amari. So, you've joined the Institute. I suppose in the end, they always win. We have nothing to discuss. The Institute has no business here. Understandably, as she worked with the railroad and we kind of wiped them out. But not everyone in the Commonwealth is pretty much sickened by us siding with the Institute. Heading to Sanctuary, we can check in with the Minutemen by talking with Preston Garvey. Damn. The Brotherhood taken out. The Institute sure doesn't do anything halfway, do they? 
You sure that was the right choice? Siding with the Institute? I wish there'd been another way, but there wasn't. The Brotherhood wasn't going to back down. They were the shoot first, ask questions later types. No doubt about that. Sean was right. The Institute is the best hope for the future. I hope you're right. It was my decision, not yours. You're right, General. Besides, what's done is done. Now we just have to live with it. The Brotherhood was a bigger threat to the Commonwealth. They needed to be dealt with. You may be right. They certainly were a big threat. And I am glad the Institute took them out. In any case, what's done is done. We'll just have to figure out how to live with this new world you've created. And off he goes, Preston Garvey, always on the move. It seems like Preston and the Minutemen are rather on the fence here. They're not exactly sure that siding with the Institute was the right call, but they're not exactly sure that the Brotherhood was a better alternative. Interesting that he doesn't really have anything to say about the railroad, or siding with the Minutemen. Now there are many more potential companions in the game, besides the ones that we've met during this series, but I won't cover them here because we didn't meet them during this series, and I already covered their reactions to the Institute ending in my dedicated character profiles about them. Though I will say that none of them, not even Piper and Nick Valentine, choose to leave our company if we side with the Institute. I suppose the only ones besides them who really should would be Dance and Deacon. But, uh, yeah, they kinda already did. But not all companions have a reaction to us siding with the Institute, and I was really surprised and disappointed that Codsworth didn't have anything to say. He's been with us from the very beginning, and I had hoped that he would have shared his thoughts on this, but sadly he doesn't address the topic at all. I went all over trying to find more people who had something to say about the choices we made, but Virgil didn't have anything to say. No one at Bunker Hill had anything to say about the choices that we made. Not even Old Man Stockton, whom, as we'll learn in a future episode, is more than what he seems. But we find more evidence of the Institute's supremacy as we explore the Commonwealth, for the Institute has taken over all of the pre-war military checkpoints in the Commonwealth. These checkpoints are distinguished by being littered with ruined military technology, military tanks and APCs, sandbag barricades and ammo caches. These checkpoints are now manned by Institute synths, perhaps as a show of force or maybe to instill some sort of order in the Commonwealth, though I don't think that's it because the Institute doesn't really care enough about the Commonwealth to try to lay down the law so to speak. Now the Institute has taken over these military checkpoints to try to root out any remnants of the Brotherhood of Steel, and presumably the Railroad. Every now and then as we approach one of these checkpoints, we'll get a miscellaneous quest notification that we need to help defend the checkpoint. If we do, when we get close, we'll find the synths at that checkpoint under attack from a variety of enemies. It could be raiders, it could be ghouls or super mutants, and sometimes it's members of the factions we've already dealt with. In this example, some Brotherhood soldiers in a Vertiberg. Looks like they didn't all go down with the Prid one. Some soldiers may have been out on patrol when it did. And though we don't really have to, we have an opportunity to defend the Institute at these checkpoints. The sending for the Institute leaves many questions unanswered. Some of that unintentionally, and I think some of that intentionally. After all, we are now the director of the Institute. And therefore, the future of the Institute and the Commonwealth is kind of up to us. And I think the developers wanted to leave open the freedom for our creativity that way. To roleplay the future of Boston the way we want to. I went on Twitter and asked my followers if they had any questions about what happens after we side with the Institute. And many of their questions were about the bigger picture, which sadly we don't have any answers for. At least nothing concrete. But based on the lore that we discovered in the Institute when we explored it, and now that we fully understand the character of the Institute, we can make an educated guess as to what would happen. For example, does the Institute ever go back out into the Commonwealth and tackle the super mutant problem? Well, they never did before, and I don't see why they would now. 
After all, when we found the Institute, they had shuttered the FEV program, thanks to Virgil, but they made no effort to accept the fact that Supermutants and the Commonwealth was their fault. And ultimately, they don't care. Nick Valentine summed it up well when he just said that the Institute treats the Commonwealth as their petri dish. They use it to conduct their experiments. They see the Commonwealth and its people as a lost cause, and so they're not concerned with their well-being. The Institute doesn't come and enforce laws or enslave mankind. They don't start rounding up everyone who breathes. But they neglect the Commonwealth. They continue with their experiments, and they don't care who they hurt while conducting them. I wasn't able to find any random encounters after choosing this ending, and I don't think any exist. We don't stumble upon a group of Brotherhood of Steel child squires, for example, whom we can invite to one of our settlements, and they never address the problem of some synths developing free will, or at least expressing their desire to be free. I mean, we have to remember that, sure, it was Liam Bonet and the Railroad that was helping synths escape, but they weren't the ones who caused those synths to want to escape. That's something they'll still want. The Institute seemed to see it as a quirk in their programming, something they could overcome in the future. But we don't find any indication that they ever do overcome that, they're planning to overcome it, they're working on overcoming it, or that it's even possible to overcome. Which leaves us with a reality where there are some synths who don't want to be there and are essentially enslaved against their will. And with the Railroad gone, there is no hope for them. The Institute's end goal has never been to form a government above ground. They don't want to rule the Commonwealth. They don't want to organize it. They don't want to protect it. They want to use it. Their only concern is with preserving the Institute so that the Institute can continue their experiments. When they say that they're humanity's future and they're the best hope for mankind, they're saying that their synths are the next evolutionary step in humankind. The actual living people who encompass mankind are a lost cause as far as the Institute is concerned and they've given up on them. They're all gonna die and the Institute doesn't really care how they die. They're planning to preserve humanity in their synths. They are setting themselves essentially up to be the manufacturers of humanity's future. A humanity that can never age, is immune to FEV and all other viruses and diseases. But a humanity that is their slaves, that can never reproduce. A humanity that for now is stuck underground. And that's about all that changes in the Commonwealth after siding with the Institute. That's it. We've completed the game, we found Sean, and we saved the Institute. But that's not the whole story. Remember, many episodes ago, we made a choice to work with the Institute. But there are three other factions in the Commonwealth. In my next episode, we'll pick one of these other factions and explore their story from start to finish. We'll pick up the story right after we discovered the true nature of Sean in the Institute and find out how their story evolves from there. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe. I typically produce a new episode in this series each and every week, but I'm going to need some time to gather all of the footage necessary to produce the next section of this series. That might take me a week, it might take me several weeks, so be patient. I will be back with more videos in this series, but it might take me a little bit of time. In the meantime, you can watch my live streams and of course watch all of my numerous daily shorts. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. 
YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to aux emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. You can also send me a super thanks on this video. And YouTube Shorts now accept super thanks. I try to publish a new short every day, so if you like my shorts and you want to see me keeping them coming, go ahead and send me a super thanks. And another great way you can support this channel is to support my sponsor, Factor. I've got a link to their sign-up page, along with my unique promo code, in the description of this video. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Explore the lore. This shirt is a culmination of all of the lore hunting we've done in the Fallout universe and in all of the games I've played during my live streams. Explore every nook and cranny, uncover every secret, read every terminal, holotape and scrap piece of paper, explore the lore. This shirt is available in a wide range of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other items as well, like mugs and stickers and lots of other stuff. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. Thanks to each and every one of you who has continued to support my channel and watch these videos every week. You can catch me during my live streams, and I'll see you soon in a couple of weeks or so when I continue the full story of Fallout 4.